How's it guys? Welcome back. I was just thinking we have a bit of proper home cinema king madness going today. It's a Saturday and I decided to unbox these. Normally I'll wait to the week but I'm too excited. But it's proper home cinema king. We have Trista, Twister going on in Cine 1 next door. We have something else going on in Cine 2 that side. Um, we have family over. So if you guys hear anything happening, that's why. Okay. Before we get into this, I'm thirsty. It's hot in SA. Summer is here. Not sponsored by Monster. Still looking for energy drink, energy drink sponsor though. If anyone is keen. Okay. I'm upgrading the Bowen Wilkins Cinema. This should be the last upgrades in this cinema. As far as I can take this system, I think. Are we ever done with upgrades so as you guys can recall the original where i did the bound wilkins ct cinema i put the bound wilkins ct 7.4s as fronts because the 7.3s were sold out they've come back in i've just had other projects going but i decided eventually to go and get the 7.3s so what i'm going to do is because i have the denon a1h now being 15 channel capable, why not use it? So I am going to just see where I'm going to fit them. That's why I'm looking at the back. We will take down the 7.4s. We will put up the 7.3s as LCRs. Then I'm going to be using them as front wides, the old 7.4s, front wides. I was going to put them behind the screen, but I don't think it's going to give the desired effect. So I'm going to put them sort of in the angles, in the corners. See how I'm going to do that. It's not going to be permanent. We will be moving soon, as I said. So all of this kit needs to move. Then I've got one extra speaker that I don't know what I'm going to do with. I'm going to figure that out now. And as I'm doing the unboxing, we'll also do where I put them up. And um, we'll do a quick D-Rack test. Um, I also want to show you 7.4 versus 7.2, um, oh, 7.4 versus 7.3 in a stereo battle to see if we can spot notices and differences. And I'll also show you as we do the DRAC graph how DRAC picks those speakers up differently between the 0 0.5, 0 0.4s, and 0.3s. Um, I've got them all now, so we can test them all. I've even got the uh, seven points whether there's the fours or the f i think the fours in the ceiling but the in wall one i use those for in ceiling if you guys can't remember i'll post a link to that video as well in this one for the guys the new members and stuff that haven't checked it out to go back and have a look at that but let's get into unboxing these these are damn huge boxes this is not a one-man carry job. I couldn't remember the other boxes being this big. So I'm thinking this speaker should be bigger. Let's see. We're going to compare them head to head now. Alright, so at least, at least now I can do one on top of the other. So we'll open this box and put the speaker down here. So let's get into it. I can really not remember the other ones being this big. Very industrially packed. It's heavy duty tape. Got staples on there. Insanely well packed. I can show you guys also. There you go, guys. If you can see. Let me try to keep it like this. Manual with um, all different ways of mounting. There's small 3M feet. There's bigger 3M feet. I'm guessing that is if you want to tilt it a bit. Very cool. I really can't remember them being the school, but it's been a while. Sorry, my sinuses. Um, also, these are what look like speak on. Speak on connectors. You have the bung plugs there. Wall brackets. Again, it's nice that they are supplied. You guys might think, ah, oh, who needs a bracket? Trust me. 
like the clips they don't come with brackets so brackets and then there's the grill um bung plugs that i'm going to, i like to use the bung plugs so let's get this big boy out uh, maybe let's remove the grill uh, first there you go i'm not going to open the grills because i don't use them top foams in there for now and uh, this speaker is definitely bigger oh, oh, yes heavy man they are big the sides this side where is is it a sock is it let me just see where this thing is taped Man, this thing I can really, uh, unless this week's been very long and I'm very weak today. I have been feeling a bit under the weather, that might explain it, but no, they're much bigger. They are much bigger. Um, on the 7.4, on the 7.4 and 5s, there wasn't a size difference in the cabinets, they're the same. These are way, way bigger. Way, way bigger. and heavy man there you can see guys I'm looking at the back completely different completely different speaker there's our little tweeter protector guys this is a huge LCR these are two 8 inch drivers that is a 6 inch mid freeway speaker and the same tweeter as on all the rest um, cloth dome high frequency it is nice that it's a cloth dome and it's not aluminium that's why this system sounds so nice it's not overly bright everyone that's heard this system has been gobsmacked of how good it sounds the details the airiness the scale um, and the scale is one thing if we move into a check the goosebumps if we move into a scene like Jurassic Park and you go into that open world, the atmosphere and the sense and the size is just absolutely amazing. And also because these surrounds are directional and not bipole. And as we've learned now going through DRAC and all of this high-end calibration training, you don't want a dipole speaker, guys. We have been wrong all the time. Dipoles... When you calibrate them, you can't locate where that speaker is. What does calibration do? It locates a speaker and it calibrates it. So you can't properly calibrate and locate a dipole speaker. You want a directional speaker. So, sorry guys, all the guys with dipoles, start swapping them out. They're obsolete. We need directional speakers to calibrate them properly. We can do to an extent, it's going to sound okay, but not as good as this. I've got two rooms next to each other to prove that point to you. Okay, so we have the 6-inch woven aramid fiber FST mid-range, the 8-inch paper aramid fiber base. So the mid-range that is on here is very much the same as the two mid-ranges on the 7.4s. Um, guys you can see the difference i need to clean these they've been behind the screen that's a hulking big difference hey um and then i think in the first video i said they are all the same size they were for those they are not for this this speaker is way bigger as you guys can see um mid-range different base drivers different that is so much more going towards the bowen wilkin 800s so much um, i can't wait to hear these let's do them stereo and we test them side by side i'm excited for this front stage now the system is going to rock okay i've had to go and crack out the big guns the hardware because the quick swap i was gonna do is no longer a quick swap i'm gonna have to move stuff around guys these brackets work so nicely everything's in the box 
just line them up with the holes um, add the screw um, measure out uh, so in my case I'm gonna have to leave one plug where it is in the wall because we have masonry in um, South Africa so it's not rhino board and stuff like that so I'm gonna leave one plug and move the one I'm guessing on the sense I'm gonna have to move both ah man this quick job is now gone into a whole day thing you guys know how that works yeah looks like this is turning into one of those I like to share all the quirks with you guys as I'm installing these also have mountings at the bottom to stand mount them and make sure they don't fall off so way way more flexibility than I originally thought just to give you an idea of size guys there you go left and right up it's all the old center <laughs> they're way bigger let's do a few sound tests to hear the difference before I start putting I've decided I'm going to put one front wide there on a stand not the way it is now I still need the stand and another one in the corner there I was also thinking at front heights but I think wides I've never tried wides I want to try wides and then I'm going to test these let me switch this camera sorry guys I'm all hot and sweaty I've been working hard then I'm going to test these and tell you guys, and I'll tell you honestly, are they an upgrade from the 7.4s to the 7.3s? Are they worth the extra money? It's not a big jump. I'll post the pick prices again. I think it was about high 20s compared to mid mid 30s or just about there's about 10,000 rand difference okay so there's a bit of a difference I always say not much but let's see if it's worth that money I'll let you know did I waste my money or is it an upgrade let's do some um, testing just from speaker to speaker to see if we can hear an immediate difference okay guys I'm trying to get you in between the two speakers as best as possible there's a difference. Um, I think it's going to be more prominent when we get into serious testing. But just in stereo, um, let me just see where we are now. Okay, so I'm not going to pump the volume too much. Um, they're still breaking in. But listen to these are the 703s. Well, the 703. Seven oh three. Seven oh four. Seven oh three. So, I would definitely say there is more mid bass and mid range and low down punch on the 703, which is, you know, a no brainer because it has um, the two big bass drivers and, um, yeah, just much better control over the audio. Um, so, in stereo, yes, they are better. Like, in stereo, bigger is more of always more as they say um, and in this case it's true so I want to see in home theater when we've calibrated and all of that will you notice a difference then because honestly the 704s as a front stage was absolutely phenomenal um, I'm gonna carry on getting all of the sets up and we will test the 703s as a front stage and let you know how much better it is What a difference they are much better what the base the base um, Wow goosebumps can't wait to get the system done now um, so yeah you can actually use all of these as a front stage um, I just always say bigger is better um, headroom headroom for miles um, and we're still going to calibrate these um, but I'm running them full range now just their stereo no subs phenomenal phenomenal 
some serious dampening going on inside these cabinets guys can you see serious dampening very nice to see oh by the way um the dimple port you guys know why why that is hey it is for the wind that comes out to break it up to make any chuffness even less no noticeable it is now the next day as you can see i am dressed in proper weekend attire um system is all up where it's going to be we have the front wide left and right the lcrs or behind the screen again um i'll post a pic of all of that i'm now going to wire the system up because i'm excited to hear how this sounds um i think it's going to be absolutely epic this is going to be like i said before it is we're moving all of this so for now that's why they are on the stands i actually think they look quite good in the stands but um in the next demo room we build um i will actually mount them to the walls etc etc but for now this is going to do i'm going to wire this up quickly we are going to be using the paris sound five channel power amp to power the fave uh, fave to power the five front speakers the Denon A1H will be running the rest of it, which it is more than capable of doing. Every single speaker in this system is Bowen Wilkins CT7. Um, so we have CT7.4s, um, 7.5s for all the surrounds. We have the 7.4s, as you can see now for the wides. We have the 7.3s as you saw in the unboxing for behind the screen and we have the 7.5s in the ceiling, the inner walls. We have those up so they are all Bowen Walk and CT, all being quite power hungry but we are feeding them more than enough power. Um, subwoofers in this system is not Bowen Walkins, they are SVS PB2000 Pros times 4 reason for that being is i do not really feel bowers and wilkins makes a sub that gets i don't know um value for money for me on the svs um is still better than the bowers if we went ct for this we would have i'm sure it will be good but it's going to be darn expensive is to go for the ct 15 inches the custom installs and then we need an amplifier because they're passive so our cost would have been roughly i'll work it out but maybe two to three times more and i doubt we'll be getting two to three times the performance out of those but we might still play around with those at a later stage i've always of all my builds had a cost effective thing in mind if i can save money somewhere and have the same performance or even better i would do that so in that way also teaching you guys to sort of where you can save money and still have the same performance um yeah and i'm guessing every one of us is the same unless you just have an unlimited budget where you can spend and not worry about the cost that's not me i have a budget um, the nice thing about the CT15s is they are very shallow, um, so you can mount them, I would have been able to almost mount them back and put a screen down so you don't see anything. Where my cinema I've had to work around, I don't have this re the real estate in front to bring the screen out all the way. Well I suppose I could, but I'm gonna, my walkway is gonna be dead the ratio from the projector already I've had to add in these little velcros on the side just to get the JVC uh, JVC is NZ5 by the way just to get the J JVC projector to get the right throw ratio um, the Epson in here was fine but JVC doesn't exactly have the same short throw as um, the Epson had and um, so different projectors you know vary in their throw ratio so always check that out twice now um, once at homation we made this mistake when we did their clips room and here yeah, I made the same darn mistake you think it's going to be fine and then you start building out the wall then I start doing the calibration of the projectors like oh. and then you have to add, add um, you have to add masking to the side of the screen yeah it's one of those 
things. Okay, so let me quickly wire this up, grab my laptop, start calibrating because I want to watch a movie today. Guys, I'm taking you into some of the behind the scenes <laughs> in my lair, quickly making up the wires for um, what we're going to be using now. I want to show you guys what I normally do on my installs. Um, and this is for all my installs. Just to make sure it is a good quality install, but also still, we don't need to completely destroy the bank on this stuff. You know, if you're going to be building a very nice stereo setup, it is fine to go and splurge on nice wires. They're not really going to give you a performance gain. You know, the, you get the guys that are big time into their wires and I find it all to be snake oil. Um, I've never, I've never heard a difference on a speaker cable. And I know many of the manufacturers that supply me now are going to be, nah, there's a difference. I've not heard a difference, guys. So, what I use, I'm just trying to get this insulation tape off. Well, let me cut a new piece. This is on here so darn good. And when this insulation tape rolls up to find where the hell it is is always a nice little drama anyways let's do another side this is the cable i use for all of my custom installs this is from lynx but most of these custom install suppliers their wires are the same so this is a four core why I use a 4-core, and I will use a 4-core for my speakers like now as well, is I like, I like, I don't know, I like the deal redundancy of it, where you are connecting more strands to the same speaker, um, making it carry a bit more current, and if something should in time go wrong, with one of those strands, there is still another one carrying the slack, as you can see, four core, um, which is also, this is the thinner one, you also get the thicker one. What is also nice about this, if you are carrying this into the roof, you get into the roof one wire going up that you can hide nicely and you just split these in the ceiling. Just remember what you are doing. I've got a recipe where it's always red and black and white and green just remember what you are doing um, so I use these for all of them these are OFC copper I did a video a long time ago that most of you I suppose missed I will go through it again OFC copper stands for oxygen free copper that makes that it does not corrode over time um, I've done some retrofits where there's speaker wires running outside especially where there is a lot of moisture and then when you add the new speakers and you start twisting the strands, they just break in your hand because they've corroded over time. Oxygen-free copper won't do that. So just make sure your speaker wires are nice OFC copper. These don't kill the bank. These are about 60 Rand per meter, South African Rands, um, and they work very nicely. If we are doing a nice stereo install, then we will add a nice QED or wire world, you know, the nice thick twisted cables that cost like 15,000 Rand for a three meter run. Um, but those are mostly for looks. We'll do them on monitor audio platinums, that sort of thing, bow and walk and diamonds, um, and let them run over the floor in a nice shape on stilts. So it's mostly for the aesthetics and the bragging rights. That for me is why the nice cable is for. This you're not going to see. It just needs to carry a good quality signal. Then what I also do, I know a lot of guys don't like banana plugs. I do. Just for the look of the install being nice and tidy making sure that none of the strands behind the receiver touch or if someone you know um, does pull on a cable that it doesn't pull it loose and make a short or something these again these are from the same company these are links um, and what is nice about these is you have the dual grabbing screws so it's very nice in there these are um, 
20 what are these where's that box i can tell you exactly what's in these high quality gold plated termination plug for stereo or home cinema they come four in a pack this is the pro series again these aren't too expensive these work out about let's work it back quickly 60 60 rands for one um so they come in a pack of four for 240 um, so one pack will do termination on both ends um, I like these it just makes install at the back of the receiver nice and neat going in there um, and also easy to plug in now if you have a, a install where you can't really see nicely at the back now to keep your balance and try and hold this and make sure it's there make sure the strands are touching touching on this we connect them up nicely we plug them in label them quick and easy I'm quickly going to do these I'll show you what they look like when I'm done right, so I've split all the ends on my wires now um, so if you do hear the noise in here our house is green so it is on solar so that's the inverters doing their thing um, I normally now I'm going to connect make the four into two so I and try try when you do this if you do it a lot to always do it the same so it comes as nature that you don't make a mistake because you do make a mistake here having maybe the white and the green and the red and the black you will short out the unit so make sure you do this correctly um, so for me it's always if I'm running two different sets of this and I'm splitting it it will be the red and the black which will be the normal one and then the white will be my red and the green will be my black so now I will be combining the red and the white twist them nice and tight the green and the red twist them nice and tight and I've already done it on the other end that is my three meter length that I'm gonna need now grab your plugs at this point in time it's not necessary to do colors because the color sleeve you can put on any one you want so just make sure I've loosened the screws to where there's a nice gap and these can accept thick wires so this is not going to be a problem then you just stick it in there nice and as deep as you can take your take your screwdriver flat head on these and just twist them in until it's nice and firm do the other one two screws for dual redundancy as you can see there's a theme here wires are doubled up the screws are doubled up so redundancy 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 for us as custom installers every time we need to go back to a project there's time and money that we do not get paid for um, unless it's something on the um, client side but if it's something like this that came loose you know so make sure everything is perfect now if you can see i can pull this as hard as i want it's not coming off there now we have that so why we have the sleeve if this now touches again we have a short so we have the sleeves so now look where your red and white is and you take your red sleeve and you put it over that nice and tight um, i've seen some of these these links ones they go in nice and tight and they won't rattle loose with base the cheapy ones, um, the Nakamichi plugs, they look the same, they're cheaper, they're not the same. Those of time, the bass rattles loose, and I've listened to music, it's like, where's that rattle coming from? And this sleeve, this is what happens. I'm not going to tighten this one down. You hear that? With the bass, that's what happens. So tighten it nice and down. This one has like sort of, when you get to the end, it goes in um, more resistance like so no no wrestling unless they touch each other but yeah so that's it nicely now no interference from that no shorting out very cool just go and plug them into the unit that's going to be the one side i'm going to do the other side now but that is why i like to use banana plugs nice and easy to put in and it just looks cool as well it's not going to add anything in the way of sound it just looks cool so there we are ready to go install i have my two lengths of three meters terminated at both ends <coughs> this a lot of time for the guys is a grudge purchase because you've now bought your amplifier you've bought your speakers all the money has been spent right no it's not 
these two lengths just three meters and this is doing it cost effectively but still quality but let's call it cost plus one um, because it, it's you can go cheaper than this but I would not this is where I would start um, and this is where I do start this these two pieces with the terminations works you out about a thousand bucks um, if I work it back into dollars what's that about fifty dollars fifty dollars to to do this which is not bad but you know if you've spent um, a lot of money on your speakers and amp and there's nothing left this is where you're going to try and cut cost and that and don't let me quickly show you the difference between this and going up to QED QED is much better but it does come at an increased cost let me show you the difference okay guys here we are at the back of some of my speakers as you can see I have the same year on these why I also like to use these is the way it goes into the speaker when I push it in now look how nice and tight that is because they have the sort of um, off almost what do you call this like a rigid push in and not the one that sort of pushes out those wear out of time the QED one this is even more industrial look how properly that is terminated um, and their push in has this little slide here so the QED cable is much better but these are about a thousand five hundred or two thousand five hundred for a three meter run so we have now went four times up in cost so yeah um, this is what I use on a lot of stereo setups and going higher and thicker um, I might also use this on a front stage on some of our projects these are on the corn walls now just want to put them back in there before I forget they aren't connected and those go in super super tight um, these you can't just pull out at all so I hope that shows you the difference in so that's the QEDs those I just made up as well and these are the ones I made now it's been connected up again then and Amaranth make it so easy to connect the stuff up go into your options um, go into speakers manual setup speaker layout in my case now I am using the 13.1 channel and zone 2 because I am running a zone 2 at my pool side um, France yes I have them pre outs only if you are going to be running pre outs put them on pre out only at the bottom you will see um, it actually tells you that it is disconnecting the speaker terminal for maximum performance so it disconnects that terminal completely but you can reassign that somewhere else so these units are man I, I can't praise them enough so we have um, center same pre outs only um, then we have surround I moved now to speaker and pre out um, surround back speaker and pre out you can run a single back surround if you want um, I'm running two I do still have that additional one speaker I might play somewhere but for now not gonna do it now front wise yes we have them pre outs only hide speakers four of them you can place them where you want this is my setup top front and top rear we have them speaker and pre outs subroof is four directional um, then if you are done you like at the back where do I put all of this in go to terminal configuration and it will show you exactly because um, I don't have good access to the back of my amp stay so as you can know, move it forward a bit and then I need to try and see here but luckily I could see that I could move because I had the surround pre outs I could move them to front wide just by moving them over so it was quite easy so yeah went through everything test it when you're done with this go to levels and just make sure everything is where it's supposed to be test tone put your volume up and go through all of them front left center front right wide right surround left rear sorry I can't film nicely behind me surround back left surround left there's the front wide left top right 
top right front sorry top right um, behind left behind left front as you can see mine's not completely front I found if you put them there you are losing a lot of audio unless you can angle them so mine is behind seating front of seating that's that is how mine is subwoofers front left front right rear left rear right all the subwoofers so yeah this is now done that's now done i'm going to start calibrating this system um it's a bit of noise in the house now so i'll wait for everyone to sort of go to the front and when it's quiet because calibration you need absolute quiet i'm even putting aircons on now even putting the aircon off for that we don't want any ambient noise we want it as clean as possible i will share that with you as soon as i get to doing it and it's a bit quieter guys quick little pro tip while i was doing this i f i remembered this again um, and i wanted to share this with you with you for a long time when you are going to touch your amplifiers you've been walking on carpets you've built up static electricity in your body if you touch that amp now a lot of you would have experienced this there will be a little short sometimes even the amplifier will go will switch off because it can it detected a short what you do first is always touch a hard surface so that you de you, you earth yourself you take all the static out and then you can touch the amplifier um, i don't even want to show you how it works because i don't like it when it happens but that is the way so before you go and touch them always touch a hard surface first getting ready to calibrate um got the family out of the house for a little while unfortunately the damn washing machine and tumble dryer in the laundry outside is still running so this is not going to be a perfect calibration but it's going to be good enough for me to get the system up and running to play some stuff today and i'll do another calibration one evening when it's dead quiet so here's another helpful tip in the world of calibration some of the custom installers will actually be a bit peeved at me for giving you this info um but i'm here to help you guys what did i do to the seats now I recline them when you are calibrating put the seats in the position they are going to be um, I unfortunately have hard leather surfaces it's another no-no when you are speaking a system people normally go for leather because it looks nice and rich and you got the smell but it's terrible for acoustics because it is reflective if you go for a suede or something that is more absorbing it's much better this is what I have. So, the recliners, recline them. That hard lever surface is going to reflect all the audio next to the microphone. So, you want to have it in the position where you are going to be listening. Um, so, seat recline, main listening position, first calibration I'm going to do. Um, I've shown you guys all the other things of D Rack. Um, this is going to be from a distance, so you won't see so nicely. But like I say, if you want to go back to the other videos, go watch them. Let me quickly show you what I do. Close all these applications. We go, we launch our D-Rack. There's my D-Rack. Launch the app. I'm quickly... Um, I'm not going to run you through everything. Um, I'll show you the measurements when we are done. If you want to see everything, guys, go back to the D-Rack videos. This is just going to be it in a nutshell. The quick little tip I wanted to give you is recline your seats. Everything reflective is going to have an impact on your calibration. Let me share the graphs with you guys that like to geek out on this sort of stuff. This is before I've applied anything now. France. See, it's added a bit of a 3 dB gain there. Front right. Same thing, center, little bit of a gain. The rest, flat, flat. We'll add, we'll add a 10 dB curve now. Um, right, flat, around, backs, top right, top left, top right rear, rear. 
I picked up something weird on the subs. I will investigate into this further when I do the proper calibration. Look at this, subwoofer one. So you can see what's been detected and how it's got a four dB bump and it rolls it off slightly, okay? Subwoofer two, way difference where the graph, just look at how much this changes way different um, now you would think it's room and it might i don't think so look at one i'm going to skip two now look at subwoofer three four two two measures so much differently than the others way different um, and three of these subs are in corners number one is not um, so I'll check I'll check now is the phasing and everything correct the phasing looks correct there's no PEQ applied um, I might need to swap the phase on two redo the calibration and see um, I hear how much of an impact this has now but that for me was just very weird so again guys, now if you wanna apply your filter curve, just go drop down, um, load target curve, all groups, always all groups. Go and select your, um, let's, I'm gonna start off with a 10 dB curve and see. See, now it applies it to everything. You can go through all the speakers and see how it applies that curve. And then while you are in here, just check that you are happy with all the crossover frequencies. Do direct bass control if you need, and then export. Okay, here's my graphs now before I calculate the advanced bass control. My subwoofers. As you can see, they are now all calculated as one. Um, front, left, right. Um, these hertz I kept at 70 on the surrounds I moved the hertz to 80 and then on my ceilings I moved it to 120 not that they can't handle more I just don't want the base under 120 from the ceilings because um, it's going to introduce a lot of rattles that I do not desire in the ceiling okay so now that we've done all of this and everything is looking good and you are happy um, it's nice to see where everything sort of rolls with the cross of the audio I love to see the graphs like this and how the bass then you know You can see the subwoofers roll off and I like to see all of this stuff So now you can go and calculate advanced bass control I highly recommend if you guys do not have advanced bass control on D-Rack Just purchase it. You, 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 you don't know you need it. You need it. Now we're going to calculate this takes a long while um, after this we will load the file to the unit and start running some demos guys little tip always go and make sure that your DRAC file is loaded as you can see mine is loaded a1h 9.4.4 Bowen Wilkins bass control 10 db curve guys, so I shot this entire outro of this video yesterday <laughs> and the uh, the battery died so um, yeah I'm redoing it today um, actually gave me a bit more time to calibrate I loaded three different um, files on now the 10 dB curve which is very aggressive the 8 dB curve which I actually settled on and then the 4 dB curve that's meh so 4 dB curve not for me I'm gonna stay on the 8 and I can ramp it up to 10 if someone really wants to hear what these four subwoofers can do Okay, so in a nutshell, let me quickly tell you what the front wires give you extra. I would not do them if you don't have, it's not a necessity, but there is a difference. It does give you a much wider front scale. If you are watching that demo that I love from Jurassic Park, where the dinosaur comes walking in, you feel the width especially at the end where he puts one claw into the floor and the other one. You can hear how wide that stretches. Um, a quiet place. 
scenes like where he's coming walking in before the chaos hits and you hear the dog you can hear the dog barking much wider so you get a much wider sense um, music and that sort of thing you don't really notice as much it's more the sense of width on your fronts so it's a nice to have but it's not a necessity um, would I still do it if I didn't um, upgrade the speakers and needed to place these somewhere um, I'm not quite sure you're gonna have to have the extra budget to do it um, the biggest upgrade for me was going on the bigger front free LCRs um, that is much better um, and speaking about them the depth and the base especially in the test where we do them side by side it just sounds like a full full floor standard type speaker in a very compact cabinet i mean we have two eight inch bass drivers in there and the mid and the tweeter it's a proper freeway speaker but you can build yourself an epic system with any one of these Bowen Wilkins CT speakers, be it the 7.5, 7.4 or the 7.3. You're going to be crossing over where the base is going to, because it's a, it's a cinema. So you're going to be crossing over that base. Um, so you can blend it seamlessly with any one of them. Um, I can just say that the depth and the fullness becomes more as you go up i would technically you can run the 7.5 as a front but i wouldn't i would at least do the 7.4 and if you can the 7.3 is it worth the extra for me um the 10,000 rand going from the 7.4 to the 7.3 hell yes definitely the only reason i didn't initially do it because there was no stock and this cinema had to get done so we opted for those always knowing that i'm going to swap them out at some point for the bigger units and that is now love this system absolutely love the system guys if you want to experience the system hit me up we can do a demo for you um make you a cup of coffee uh, i had a client here on friday which is a big bow and walkins fan um actually he's buying some clips heritage speakers now um but then i played him the bow and walkins cinema and he was blown away i uh, really loved it so i like the bow and walkins cinema um i always say I place these above the Clips THX and they actually come in a bit more cost effective. Believe it or not, Bowen Wilkins coming in more cost effective than the Clips THX. 
it comes in on the subs um, the subs if you're going to run four of those with amplifiers that makes it expensive again and then after this I would say then we start looking at the Trinovs in a completely completely different level of cinema but I love this system to absolute bits if any of you are on the fence if you want to do the Barnwalk and CT cinema trust me just do it or if you can come I'll show you what you can do with these speakers. But yeah, so that was it. We've played, we, we changed out the front stage. We added the front wides. I've got one extra speaker left now. I've been playing around. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there's any way I can actually use it that's going to be effective. I'm just going to keep it as a spare. Maybe we'll have a project pop up where I need an extra speaker or something. Or I'll keep it for one of these die but these things don't die um, all these cinema speakers are made to such a level um, the build quality is insane but okay guys so that is it I hope you really enjoyed this and showing you the calibration of the cinema and again how we can do the different curves let me quickly show you before I go um, just how it works now you just need to go to Dirac and as easy as just switching them over you can do it in settings as well but when i come here i can actually see exactly so there we go we have the a1h 944 8 db that's off that's 10 db that's 4 db i think i'm gonna t take the 4 out completely and change over 6 db because that does nothing for for fullness um the 10 db is like i say insane the 8 db for me is where it is um just the magic sweet spot. If you got any info out of this, please like, subscribe, and share. Help me grow this channel. Doesn't cost you anything, but it goes a long way towards analytics. Stay tuned for the next video. Keep safe. Cheers. Bye.